My Sonic news sense was tingling. Does that mean we actually have Sonic Frontier news? Let's check it out. Hey guys, Zeno here. It looks like Sonic Frontier news has awakened the, this channel from its slumber. And uh, I'm not going to be doing like those over analysis videos. I am going to form my opinion because some people are literally like from what I've seen on social media, they're all for the new footage or all completely against the new footage in terms of what the game is looking like so far. But I am going to take what I've absorbed into the two videos they've released, because I did wait a day, it was a good idea for me to wait a day for them to release the combat footage to form a better solid opinion on what we've been seeing for Sonic Frontiers, so let's talk about it. First things first, I want to get a little technical and say I'm impressed that they actually added tessellation and displacement mapping to the game engine. If you don't know what that means, if I show some combat footage of the combat thing that IGN has released, there is, like, he's fighting a character in the stream, and you actually see the rocks in, like, polygons of rocks it's displayed on the terrain there. That's the best way I can describe it. A lot of games have been doing this for the past decade, but a lot of games that require high, fast-paced action never used it, like Forza, racing games, Sonic games. You're just blazing by the geometry that there's really no need to displacement map your terrain. But they decided to do it here, probably because it's open world so when you're walking around absorbing the environment you can see the extra detail there so that's nice I already like the gameplay for that purpose so let's that technical jargon's out of the way other than the, well a little bit more technical jargon on the environment anyway don't really care about the art it looks cool a little more generic -y than I would like to uh, admit but it still looks pretty the only thing I don't like is the foliage still looks last gen to put it nicely it'll it passes you know but like things that do a better job like breath of the wild i hate that breath of the wild is the standard because it's on such old ancient hardware but it does such a good job at eliminating bad pop-up of higher higher detail geometry and um better foliage just the way the art style works for that game the foliage doesn't look so bad like it's it's not clearly a flat plane with a texture on it they did a better job at making it look like an actual blended and rendered piece of grass i wish sonic's engine did that who knows modders might be able to fix that someday but all right now that i lost everybody on the video we can actually talk about the probably the things people actually care about like the combat first things first i was surprised to see how unique Unique maybe isn't the right word, but how different the combat has been for a Sonic game. Sonic actually throws punches. In fact, Sonic actually throws supersonic punches. There's a lot of different things to do. You don't just homing attack or kick them. You can kick, attack, punch, um, do this weird string of complicated attacks. It's quite interesting. And the fact that enemies actually do different things instead of just stand there and wait to be attacked. You know, it's weird to think we've jumped from Sonic Forces where enemies barely do anything like if you see that famous footage of egg Punch just standing there not even attacking they didn't even have an attack animation to enemies now react to your type of attacks like he, this thing had a shield in the combat video and you couldn't attack it unless you did the weird new ability sonic gets that like opens up these weird creatures i, I have to call them creatures because i don't know if they're actually robots or something there's something about aging technology that sonic unlocks through his running that you can use to make them vulnerable. And it's cool you have to interact with the characters that way. There's a lot more interaction in the combat here. And the closest thing I could probably point this out to would be Kingdom Hearts. If you play the older Kingdom Hearts games, I feel like it has that kind of lock-on system, that kind of reaction against the enemy for combat. You know, sometimes there's just states where enemies can't be damaged. Like, imagine the fat enemies in Kingdom Hearts. You had to go behind them to hit them. Sonic, you had to react towards what they were doing. There's a lot more involvement in the combat, and that's really cool. Because you go from Sonic Forces, hell, even Sonic Adventure 2 had extremely basic combat. It didn't even have it where, like, you homing attack or you somersaulted. And depending on the enemy, sometimes they're just invulnerable completely and you had to wait it out. You had that, you know, that difficulty illusion. So this is already a big step up from, uh, 
what they've had for a long time, which is great that they're doing that for the open world. So now it's not just Sonic running around in an empty environment with enemies that aren't really enemies. They're just bouncing pads for you to get to another area of the stage. It's not like that anymore. There's actual purpose in the, uh, in the combat. It feels rewarding to actually... Now, not as rewarding as some other modern games like Dark Souls or something, but it's it's a big improvement for the Sonic franchise. So, yeah. Um, one other thing we can continue talking about, the environment in terms of traversing it isn't nice. He, he looks slow. Uh, the environment looks... What do you call it? it? Like Things change too rapidly. Things look unnatural. Now, it, that's hard to... I gotta admit, especially if you're going from a level designer from a Sonic game to an open world environment, that's gonna look weird no matter what, because you just have random floating grind rails, you have random floating platforms in an open world environment, it just doesn't look right. It looks very unnatural, so... As much as I don't like it, I'm giving it a pass. We're gonna see how much more you can explore and do in the areas. Um, I don't know how much else I can talk off that. This is why I never made the video for the first part, because the first part showed so little. It just showed off pretty much the environment and the art. Which, by the way, IGN, whoever encodes your freaking videos, you tell them to encode at a higher bitrate, because it does not matter that you uploaded it in 4K. It is still bit crushed to hell, and it is annoying, because you can't see those finer details unless the camera sits still. And guess what? You're playing a Sonic game. The camera's not going to sit still. With that ran out of the way, um, looking back at the combat, I know they disabled the HUD for the demonstration of the combat, but you can obviously tell when they killed something, that little magical <laughs> that flowed across the screen, like, magnetized to a piece of the HUD that would be there on the screen. Like, if, if you see me on my webcam right now, there's like, it goes like, whoosh. he killed an enemy, like, in the center screen, and then it would like, whoop, and then like, move over to here, which would... I'm guessing would be some sort of charge meter. Now, I don't know if it's... It's not your boost, but I'm guessing it's a meter that pertains to your ability to do the little dash circle thing that lets you make your enemies vulnerable a lot easier so you can keep the flow going and not overuse it. Like, I bet it drains and, like, reflows slowly over time, but that speeds up the process by collecting them. Because, obviously, there's other collectibles according to the other footage. So, that is what I think that thing does, and... Hopefully you can do a lot more than just spin around enemies with it, because I feel like that's just... It becomes mundane really easily. In order to make combat more interesting, you probably want to avoid using it. Because that little spinny enemy that he used to make him vulnerable, he still attacks you. He just enters a defensive state when you get close to him, and when you're close to him, you just do the circling move, and then you can punch him. So... Yeah, that's... The little enemies, I feel like, are a little more fun. Again, they remind me of Kingdom Hearts combat, like, fighting Heartless. They remind me of nobodies, that kind of <laughs> weird correlation there. But uh, the bigger enemies, they look, I hate to say unnecessarily complicated to defeat, but at least they're a lot more engaging. Or that one enemy they showed off where you boost up and then attack his pillar, that limb comes off, he shoots more things that can hurt you, and then things that reflect you back from like reverse sound, like sonic booms instead of the forward dashing sonic booms. Hopefully there's not just like a bunch of those enemies as the big enemies and there's a lot more combat variety because if there's one thing I've learned from a bunch of newer games, I haven't really played Dark Souls, I've watched Dark Souls, I hate to go back to Dark Souls in terms of the combat standard, but there's various times of, types of different enemy um, variety and hopefully Sonic does something to keep that also buried in, what's the word? I think that's the right word. Just more than like three because <laughs> then things will get boring relatively quickly but um i'm still banking on the fact that the story is going to carry this game immensely other than the fact that sonic players have been so starved of anything walking through the game will probably be such a nice and relaxing and fun thing to do for a sonic game i feel like the story is going to drive this game hard because the combat the combat did like, I had that, that was my original opinion, and the combat has changed that to a degree, because when they were just running around in an empty environment, I was very worried. I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't that, this game's gonna suck. I was gonna think that this game's gonna be boring. <laughs> you know, what's, it literally looked like the Unreal Engine fan demos people make, where they just plop Sonic's 
physics in an area and they just run around doing nothing. It's like, well, we already had that seven years ago made by a, one guy. Why is the whole Sonic team working on this? <laughs> Seeing that there's a lot more to do, I'm guessing they just selectively deleted enemies in that first showcase. So, again, the, hop to ho the hype meter is literally stair-stepping up, and I'm guessing that's their plan, and it's working. So, this is nice. Anyway... I want to hear what your guys' opinions are about because I don't want to just go off YouTubers' videos. I want to hear normal fan people videos to see if they align with what I think, what the other YouTubers think, their own personal opinion, their own personal takes, if they're just going to ignore the game anyway. Because I feel like Sonic Frontiers is now getting to the point where I want to visit it really soon. And it's getting me excited. Especially since it's been five years. Five years. Holy crap. <laughs> they have Breath of the Wild development time, so it better be a Breath of the Wild style game. And I mean style as in, like, production value? I don't know. We've had better games churn out in, like, two years. Time crunch. Other things like that. But I am rambling at this point, so again, I want to hear your guys' opinions. Thanks for watching the video on this oddly ping-pongy channel here and I'll see you guys in an actual review I'm actually done with it I'm getting the behind the scenes footage compiled together and that should be uploaded probably a day or so after this so until then Zeno's out and I'll dash on out of here even though I'm sitting down <laughs>